What's on, ladies and gentlemen? My name's Ross. I like games, and today I've got a very exciting video. I'm a little bit croaky still, but I don't care because I've got an enchanted card from Into the Inklands to show you. And just a little appeal from your old pal Wassy here, right? We know these are going to get shared around. If you would be so kind as to give me a little bit of a shout out if you share it round, because it's my first reveal. And I'm very excited about this, and it would be nice to get a little bit of credit for having had the reveal. Now, yesterday, I worked with the lovely folks at Tabletop Gaming to do their reveal of Maleficent. Today, I can show you Chernobog. And by complete coincidence, I think when I finish making this video, might go watch Fantasia. Because it's a big dude from one of the sections in that film. Point is, this is stunning artwork by Thomas Brissot here. We do have a more painted style for the enchanted cards this time around. And we've actually seen this on a bunch of them at this stage. Certainly the Peter Pan and Captain Hook. They connect and are by the same artist. Had a similar kind of thing going on here. The Morph did as well. And I showed you the Ursa Luna yesterday. This kind and they're not all exactly the same let's be clear but this more painted style seems to be what they're going for in set three and i love this i am a gigantic fan of it the only downside of this because seriously getting an enchanted as your first reveal kind of awesome the only downside is i am definitely gonna have to get an actual real life version of this card which is really annoying because the enchanted cards can be quite hard to pull. But this is clearly one of the best cards, or at least the most interesting cards in the set. Because here's the thing, right? It's a 10 cost. 10 cost is gigantic. And it's not inkable as well. Two gigantic downsides. 10 cost card, not inkable. So if you draw this in the early game in your opening hand, for instance, you're not going to be able to get it into play very easily. And you're not going to be able to ink it. It's just going to sit there clogging up your hand. Not ideal. But you do have 9 strength, 9 willpower, and you quest for free lore. It is absurd in terms of stats. It's extremely expensive. But once you get it into play, it is redonkulously good. Here's the thing, though. You've got the skill, the power of evil. For each character card in your discard, you pay 1 ink less to play this character. So actually... It's not a 10 cost. And if you play this as a 10 cost, it's ridiculously expensive. It's not inkable. It's a pain. If you play this as a 3 or 4 cost, however, well, that's a whole different ball game now, isn't it? And that's where this card shines. And look, you can play this as just a late game card. You can play this in, for instance, an aggro deck where you're expecting to play lots of small characters and expect to get a bunch of characters banished, but that's fine because the more characters get banished, the more your discard builds up and the more you can then take advantage of this skill and play it quickly and cheaply. Or you can actually build a deck around it. And look, I'm not saying I'm the only person to ever think of this, but I've just got to remind you of Whole New World. Whole New World here is ridiculous. Five costs, but obviously it's a song, so it can be sung for free by a five cost or higher character, each player discards a hand and draws seven cards. Well, the thing is here, when you discard your hand, you're probably discarding a bunch of characters. So not only are you singing this song to get a new hand, and singing this song to get a new hand is clearly brilliant, you're also singing this song to build up your discard pile so that you can play this character a lot more cheaply and that is a much different thing, a much better thing, quite frankly. So this is awesome, and I'm a gigantic fan of it. There is also a potential combo here, and I want this to work badly, with Mufasa Betrayed Leader, which actually is the same ink. So you don't even have to go, you know, for a specific combo of ink here. But that one, of course, when your character is banished, you reveal the top card of your deck. If it's a character, play it for free. And that's kind of amazing. And of course, with this character being banished, that will then also reduce the cost of another Chernobog you play in the future. Not saying that's actually going to work all that often. Just saying it would be kind of awesome if it did. Yay! Now, there is another thing we need to mention about this character, and that is Summon the Spirits. When you play this character, shuffle all character cards from your discard into your deck. So essentially, you're only getting one of these cheap. 
before you go through the whole rigmarole of having to, you know, build up your discard pile again, which is a little bit annoying, I grant you. But when you get this down, it's, I promise you, it is going to be worth it. And yes, I know this is going to be a target for removal. I completely understand this is going to be a target for removal. It is a nine willpower, nine strength, questing for free character. It's a juggernaut. It's a giant. But any good card you play is going to be a candidate for removal. Like, I showed you... Well, I told you the Maleficent yesterday. I was part of Tabletop Gaming doing their reveal. It was fun. And one of the things I mentioned when chatting to Tabletop Gaming is, look, you quest for two, and then when you quest, you draw a card, and then when you draw a card, you move a damage from one of your characters to one of your opponents. Obviously, this is going to be a target for removal too. And yeah, fine. There are going to be games where you play this character, and your opponent is able to just get rid of it straight away. Fine. That's going to happen. But what are we going to do? Never play good characters because some people are going to get removal at the right time? Even if your opponent plays a bunch of removal, there's no guarantee they hit it at the right time. And if they do, well, the absolute worst case scenario is this character gets removed, but then makes a bit of space for another good character. And then your opponent's not going to have the removal for them because they used it on Chernobog. My point is, every time a good character is revealed, I see a lot of comments going, ah, yeah, well, well your opponent's just going to target that for removal. And yeah, fair point. Every single time, a fair point. So what are we going to do? Just stop playing good characters? No. We're going to try and time this when we don't think our opponent has removal. Or we're going to play this as a two cost. And then even if your opponent removes it, you're like, ah, I'm use two ink on it. It will be fine. Yes, it's not inkable. That's a problem. Yes, you only get to kind of do this once because then the characters get shuffled back into your deck. And that's a bit of a problem. Yes, it is obviously going to be a target for removal, like any good character that is good when it's sitting on the board. But, 9 strength, 9 willpower, quest for free, and can potentially be played literally for free. And I haven't mentioned that, so let me mention it now. You can legitimately play this card for free. There's no extra text that says the cost cannot be reduced to lower than, or you can only reduce X cost when using this skill. No, 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 no. There's no limit on this. So if you can get 10 characters in the discard, this is literally played for free, which is obviously absurd. And look, you know the deal at this stage. I told you earlier in the video, you can either play a deck that seeks to build up your discard pile, or you can play an aggro deck where you're just constantly fighting and that is naturally going to build up a bunch of characters in your discard pile so that you can then play this character, I was going to say a little more cheaply, but honestly, your goal here is a lot more cheaply. And I just love this. I was telling you yesterday how in set free, I am hyped for aggro pirates. I made no bones about that. I told you that I really like the idea of playing aggro pirates. I showed you the Jolly Roger which is honestly one of my favourite things about it. So, yeah, bad news is that's my two colours of ink. That kind of pigeonholes me a little bit. So fine, I'll play Amber and Ruby. And maybe it won't work, and that's okay. But I'm telling you right now, what I'm building in set three is aggro pirates with Chernobog, and I'm very, very excited about doing that. Shout out to lovely folks over at Ravensburger for letting me have this reveal. I've not done a Lorcana reveal yet. I was starting to feel a little bit left out. And then they were like, hey, we've got a reveal for you if you want it. And I was like, yay, that sounds awesome. And then it turns out, not only is it an enchanted card, but it's a very, very, very exciting enchanted card. I know we saw the regular version of this the other day. I'm well aware of that. But I've not had a chance to talk about this card at length yet. It is a very exciting, very interesting card. And look at the artwork here. Can anyone honestly look at this and not say this is absolutely redonkulous, stunning artwork? I mean, you can. Art is entirely subjective. There's probably some of you that look at this and don't think it looks amazing, and that's fine. I think it does. I love this card. I want to build around this card. I want to test this card into the ground. And then I want to try and actually find maybe multiple enchanted copies of this card to put in my Cards I Revealed binder. And that's not going to be the easiest thing ever. But for now, I want to know what you think about this card. I want to know what you think about the art. I want to know what card that has been revealed as an enchanted so far has enticed you the most. Let me know in the comment section. Good us. Be nice. And then make sure you like this video. Subscribe to this channel. Follow me on Twitter at the Wasi. That's where we talk about Lorcana and a bunch of other card games. And of course, by far the most important thing as always, 
Look after yourselves till next time, would ya? And apologies to my croaky voice. I had a busy weekend. I'm sorry. I was casting card games. It was fun. But by far the most important thing as always. Look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross and you've been watching Wassy Plays.